you guys, today's video is a disappointing products video. I love watching these videos on YouTube, but I have actually never filmed one because nine times out of 10, if I don't like a product, I just take it back or I pass it along to a friend. I just feel like unless I am like 100% happy with something, I won't reach for it, I won't use it, and then it is just such a waste of money, especially when I spend a lot of money on makeup. I wanna be extremely happy with the things that I buy. And before I begin, I also just wanna say, I know that a lot of people start these videos off by saying, I just want to say a little disclaimer that just because I don't like these products doesn't mean I don't like the brands associated with them. And I'm not going to say that because I feel like that just goes without saying. Like companies make, makeup companies make so many different products that of course there are going to be some amazing things and some not so amazing things. And that's okay. Like I think it is awesome for us to be able to talk about the things that we love and also the things that we don't like as much because as consumers we have every right to not like things if that makes sense. And we shouldn't feel bad about not liking things, um, especially because companies pay huge dollars to get this type of feedback from their customers and to know what their customers are looking for in products. So all in all, I think these videos are actually a positive thing. They aren't negative because you and I are choosing what and what not to spend our money on and then businesses are getting feedback on what to do better in the future or how to improve their products. So. All in all, I think these videos are great. There's no reason to feel bad about saying something that you don't like. So yeah, further to that, I was saying how I take back products that I don't like. I just want to mention a couple of the couple of the things that I have taken back in the past that I obviously don't have with me, but just things that I didn't like and that I can remember off the top of my head. So the first one is the NARS Luminous Weightless um, All Day Foundation. That isn't the exact name, but I know you guys know which one I'm talking about. I just was not a fan of that foundation. I had uh, seen it on other people's skin and thought like, wow, that looks stunning. But it just did not work for me. It wasn't even like at the end of the day. It was like within a couple hours, I would notice this entire area had like broken up on me and just didn't look nice. And when you're spending $60 on a foundation, like that should not happen. So took that one back. Um, another one I took back is uh, the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette, which is interesting because the original Chocolate Bar Palette is one of my all-time favorite palettes, if not my favorite palette, and so I just was not a fan of the second one. The quality was fine, it was just the whole palette was like too dark for me, I just wasn't getting enough use out of it, so I took that one back. Um, another one is, oh, the Smashbox Full Exposure Palette, did not like that at all, like the quality, the pigmentation, it was off. There was something not right about that palette. Took that one back. Um, the Becca Backlight Priming Filter, I had got that a few months ago. And not that that was not a bad product. I actually did like it, but I just felt like for how expensive it was, it didn't do enough. So I decided to take that back as well. So that's actually just a few of the things I've taken back. I definitely don't abuse the policy. I just take back the things. I keep my receipts. I take back the things that I don't love, I keep my receipts, I follow the rules, so yeah. I am going to start off with the worst product of the bunch because a lot of these products I actually, like, I was disappointed in them, but it's not like it's like a bad product, I can still use it, that kind of thing, but this one I'm going to talk about, you guys, is actually bad. Like, it's kind of funny. And that product would be the Becca Radiant Skin Creamy Concealer. So... I bought this off of Hot Look when it was on the website last year sometime. It was super discounted, it was like 11 bucks. It was in the shade Banana, so I was assuming it was going to be this really like beautiful, luminous, under eye, concealing, highlighting type deal. Guys, no. This is literally the thickest concealer that I, I can't even call it a concealer. It is like the consistency of peanut butter or something. It is so bad and I think I was just frustrated because once I received it I was like oh yeah like no wonder they don't sell this at Sephora because it is not good. So you like click it up here and it takes a while to come out and do you see that like it just like gloops out and then when you actually put it on your face on your skin it is so thick that it was like painful to try and put underneath my eyes and I had used it with like a beauty blender 
with like I tried a few different ways to use it but every single time you guys I had to wipe off and wash my entire face and use like a makeup wipe to get it off it, it's not even like it, it was horrible and it is horrible even as I'm feeling it right now it is so sticky and bad and Becca makes some amazing highlighting products but this is not one of them and it's funny to me like it's not funny but it's just like crazy to me that this was being sold like it's like tacky it is it's so bad you guys so if you see it on Holt Look at a super discounted price do not be tempted do not it literally like to get off my skin hurts I hate it I hate it the next disappointing product I have to talk about is super disappointing and this is the Benefit Their Real push-up liner. So I have the one in black and then I also have a brown one. So the black one came out first, I believe last year, and I picked it up and I wasn't a big fan of it off the bat. It was kind of crumbly and it just didn't allow me to get a really nice smooth looking eyeliner and I didn't really use it much. And then this past so I think this one came out in 2014, I would assume. And then this one came out in 2015, the colored ones. They came out with like a brown, a green, a blue, a purple. And I heard all over the internet that they had reformulated them. And I went through, and I'm still kind of going through, a brown eyeliner face. So I decided to pick up the brown one. And the first like month or so that I used it, I really liked it. But then something happened and the formula of it changed and it became exactly like this one. So... I don't really know about this, like maybe it is I'm using it poorly, I don't really know, but all in all, disappointed in these eyeliners, I think the idea is amazing. You click it up and then you, it has a gel eyeliner that is already in the actual uh, tube here, but yeah, just disappointing, didn't work for me, and if you love it, like let me know, like maybe I'm doing something wrong. This uh, foundation from Maybelline is the Dream Liquid Mousse Airbrush, found Airbrush Finish Foundation. And I had originally picked this up because I have um, the Dream Liquid like Serum-y foundation that is the same line as this one. So I thought I would like this one as well. And I am all about a full coverage foundation, but this foundation is like so thick that it is almost like a paste on your skin and it never really sinks in it never really becomes one with the skin and I have tried to use this multiple times and every single time it just kind of looks like a mask on my face and I just I and I don't like it so I wouldn't recommend this um I have I have dry skin so that might be a factor in it but I just feel like there are a lot other options at the drugstore for a full coverage foundation that are more skin like and give your skin that more natural satin finish rather than just like harsh and like mm. I picked up this CoverGirl Intensify Me black eyeliner because I was just needing like a liquid black eyeliner and I didn't realize when I bought it that the tip of it is very strange instead of being like that felt tip like pointy end that you would expect with a liquid eyeliner um, it looks like this it almost has like this like rounded top and this makes applying eyeliner so difficult because you almost have to use it like going downwards rather than holding it this way. So I was not a fan of this. I I don't see the I don't see how this would be helpful or make anyone have an easier time applying eyeliner. And I've tried different ways and just it's not good. It's not it's not my favorite, okay? Another product from CoverGirl I was disappointed in is, this is a brow and liner powder. Mine is in the shade 810 and you're supposed to shake it before you use it and you're supposed to be able to use this as a liner and also in your brows. So I was just super intrigued. I thought this was a really unique idea and so I wanted to try it out. But it just, it does not work. It is super strange. Like it has, it is like a powder and so there's no way I would use this as an eyeliner. Like I tried to one time and it, there was just like powder flying everywhere and it just didn't look good. And in your eyebrows, it's, you can't get those like nice little feathery strokes. So it just made my eyebrows look super harsh. And the actual shade of it wasn't good for me either. It has some redness to it, like a really warm undertone. So it made my eyebrows look red. So that, I, 
I just chose the wrong color maybe, but this is just a weird product. And I will say that like, I appreciate when brands try to be innovative and come out with things that are a little bit different, but like, this is just not like a realistic product for anybody to get a good use out of it. Does anybody own this and like it? You should tell me if you do. It's just weird. It gets weird. But hey, I'm the one that bought it, right? This next highlighter that I am going to talk about is from NARS, and this is a classic NARS product. It is a highlighter in the shade Albatross. As you can see, I've hit pan on this. This is the very first highlighter that I ever owned. Back in the day when I first started watching YouTube, I saw Lauren Curtis talk about this, and I went out and bought it, and I loved it. Like, I loved it for a long, long time, but then over the years, as I started to know what is a good highlighter and what is not a good highlighter, I realized that this almost has, like, a green undertone to it, and it's just not flattering on me whatsoever. I think if you have an olive skin tone, it would be a lot more usable, but... I, it kind of got lost in my collection and I recently I used it again like trying to like you know get some use out of it and I was driving and my boyfriend was like uh, your your face looks green and I was like what and I looked in the mirror and lo and behold I had this highlighter on and right in that area my face had this like green tinge to it and it was not cute to say this to say the least so this product, I am, I actually wouldn't get rid of it. I have like nostalgic value with it, but I don't think I'll be using it as a cheek highlighter anytime soon. Another concealer I was disappointed in is this Laura Mercier High Coverage Concealer for the Under Eye. This concealer is very, very full coverage. It does cover that under eye area well, but it is just way too thick. And even if you set it right away with a powder within, you know, a few minutes, you just start to see it really kind of like sinking into those fine lines. And instead of looking nice and smooth and airbrushed, it kind of looks crepey. And I just, I'm not a fan of this. I think Laura Mercier has some of the best complexion products out there. She has a concealer that's in like a little pot and it is absolutely beautiful for that under eye area. But this one is just too thick. Like even to squeeze it out is like difficult. Like you see how slowly it's coming out there. Like it is just, it's not as thick as that Becca one I talked about. But yeah, I just think there's something, it's too emollient. That is the problem. It's it's not that it's too thick, it's that it's too oily, and so it doesn't allow that area to just stay put with powder. So, yeah, I don't know why I didn't take this back. Like, this is the prime example of something I would be like, whoa, hell no, taking it back, but I must have lost the receipt, I don't know. This next product is one of my favorite highlighters, but it is in this video because it is disappointing for the fact that it is so soft that it constantly breaks. I don't know if you guys can tell in the camera here how this powder is not smooth. That is because it has shattered into a million pieces. I can't tell you how many times. I just fixed it, I think for the fourth time a few nights ago. And if you wanna know how to fix powders, you just actually mix it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, smooth it out, and it turns back into its original form, basically. There's tons of videos out there about how to fix broken makeup, if you are interested. Um, you can just Google it. But yeah, it is disappointing because I, I, it's so beautiful, I use it all the time, but it is so frustrating having it always broken. It ends up being such a hassle. You can't travel with this. Like, this is the type of product. It has to sit on your vanity and not move, and don't, and like, God forbid you drop it on the floor because it's done for. Like, done for. This next product is not makeup, but it is a fragrance, and I just wanted to tell you guys about it so that you steer clear. So this is Burberry Touch. I don't think this is like sold like and mass produced everywhere. I saw it at Shoppers Drug Mart one time in like a bin of like $20 perfumes and they didn't have samples out or anything. But my favorite perfume is uh, Burberry The Beat. So when I saw that there was a Burber Burberry perfume, perfume on for $20, I was like, yes, I'm going to try that out. You guys, this smells like Oh my god, it smells so bad, you guys. Like, it smells like a cleaning product, but like, 
but like in the woods. Like someone has Lysol and they're in the woods. It is so weird. It smells, it says Burberry Touch for women, but it to me it would be more so something that a man would wear. It, it's such a bad scent and so I wanted to mention it in this video if so that if you ever see it on sale or something you are not tempted I don't think it's very popular but yeah it's actually like I remember getting home and being like oh shoot oh shoot so and the last product I have to talk about here is actually another concealer which is my third concealer of the video I try out a lot of concealers, so I am actually not that surprised. But this uh, one here is in this video, not because the actual product is bad, but because the applicator is bad. So the actual concealer in here, this, first of all, this is the Sephora brand Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. And if there's any sort of wording of serum or gel in a concealer, I want to try it out because I really love super hydrating concealers that have that really nice light consistency to them but this applicator is so weird you guys so when you pull it out there's only product on the very tip of it there there's none on the actual outside of it just the very top so when you use it you have to like dot it like this like at a parallel or no that's perpendicular to your face you're dotting it and then you have to like put your brush down flat and blend it all in and to actually get a decent amount of coverage under my eyes, I have to dip this product in and out probably like seven or eight times. And that is just not enjoyable. So if they were to come out with a different applicator for this, maybe something like the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, I think this would be like everyone would love it. But this, the applicator of it makes it disappointing and difficult to use. So those are all the disappointing products that I have rounded up for today's video. Please let me know if you guys have any sort of disappointing products that you should you think I should steer clear from. Let me know if any of these products you absolutely love. I'm curious. We can talk about it. It's all good. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know in the future to film more of these types of things. And please subscribe if you haven't already. It means so much to me and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial using this palette from Too Faced. This is the Stardust palette that